everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a really delicious lamb stew. This is a really delicious stew. It's one of my favorite ways to make lamb. You make really amazingly delicious meat stock at the same time. Lamb meat stock is wonderful. If you've never tried it, you really need to. Super easy to throw together, so delicious. Let's jump in and get started. I have my oven preheated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The total cook time for this recipe is gonna be four to six hours. I'm planning on about five for today. So I'm starting this around lunchtime. And I'm going to start by opening up my packages of lamb and adding them to my cast iron Dutch oven. When you're choosing cuts of lamb for this, you have a little bit of flexibility. You want meaty bones. You could even do like a lamb shoulder roast or a um, leg of lamb with the bones in. I'm doing a combination of lamb shanks. I also have some lamb femur bones and then some lamb stew meat that I'm throwing in. So I have a nice combination of those meaty bones with connective tissue and some extra meat thrown in there. Next, I'm just going to add some onion. I'm going to cut up an onion and add that. tips that I learned about making lamb turn out really delicious is to use lots of garlic with it. it smells good when it's cooking and then it adds really nice flavor. So I'm just going to add a bunch of garlic cloves. I usually add around four to six at this stage and then I'll add some fresh pressed cloves at the end of cooking too. I love these kind of dinners where you do a lot of the work earlier in the day and then later on there's not very much that you have to do to get dinner on the table. So I'm going to be serving this with some acorn squash. And normally to cook acorn squash just on their own, I will roast them in the oven for 45 minutes to an hour at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But since this is going to be a lower, slower cooking dish. I'm gonna go ahead and add those acorn squash partway through the cooking time so that they're in there a bit longer, like probably two hours is what they'll need. So I'll just be slicing those and adding them partway through the cooking time just on their own separate baking tray alongside this in the oven. Now that those garlic cloves are in there, I'm gonna add some rosemary. I have dried rosemary and I'm just gonna sprinkle a nice amount on, I would say for this, amount of meat, one or two teaspoons, depending on how strong you like things. And then I'm gonna give it a little sprinkle of pepper. Of course, if you're in earlier gaps, intro stages, and you wanna make this, then you can add peppercorns and just strain them out later. Same thing with the rosemary. You can add it for flavor and strain it out. And then a nice sprinkle of good mineral salt here. Then, last thing is to add water just to cover everything. So I have my filtered water here. I'm just gonna add that. Just making sure everything's settled so that it's submerged without adding a ton of water because you don't want your meat stock very diluted. One of the keys to making good meat stock is to make sure that it's not too diluted. So you don't want to add more water than you have to. And I think that looks good. All right, and then I'm just going to add my lid and stick that into the oven. All right, and then like I said, about halfway through the cooking time, I'm gonna come back slice my acorn squashes in half and add them on a separate baking sheet in the oven as well. And I will show you when I do that step. 
When I bake winter squashes in the oven, I don't scoop out the seeds ahead of time. I bake them with the seeds in there and they're way easier to scoop out after it's already baked. It's a little time saving hack. Alright, so cooking time is done, so it's time to pull everything out of the oven. Alright, so then it's just ready to serve up. You can have this a couple different ways. You can have all the meat and meat stock together in a bowl as a stew which is the way that we usually do it. Sometimes kids will be able to eat it easier if you have the meat separate for them and then the meat stock in a cup. We really like these little glass cups with the silicone straws for meat stock for kids. They work really well, you can't spill them very easily, and each one holds a cup so you can easily keep track of how much they're having if you need to. And then for older folks, we have it in a ceramic mug if we choose to do it that way. But I'm gonna go ahead and dish this up so you can see what it looks like. Before we get too far into dishing this up, I just remembered I need to add the fresh pressed garlic into the meat stock. and then it's ready to enjoy. We will have this, depending on if we're eating the lamb meat separately from the meat stock, either on a plate next to the meat, or if it's in a bowl like this, so we'll scoop out some of the squash and have that in the bowl, add some butter and eat it all together that way. So, very delicious meal, we always really enjoy it. I hope that you enjoyed seeing how to make this and I hope that you give it a try. Check out that description box for links to all kinds of different goodies, things that we like to use, places where I like to buy ingredients, free eBooks, GAPS diet resources. I have a free class on starting the GAPS diet with more confidence and less confusion. I also have a GAPS meal plan, a 30 day meal plan for the GAPS diet. And I also have a program where I coach clients through the GAPS diet as well. All that information is in the description box. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would like it. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, bye.